How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here. In today's Max MSP tutorial video, we are going to be talking about Patter Forward. This is a super useful object that uses scripting names to send data around, which will actually be very helpful if you're trying to create really clean user interfaces and for a plethora of other reasons. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First things first, we're going to start by double clicking in our blank space and typing in the word Patter Forward. That is P-A-T-T-R Forward. And you can see here it says send any message to a named object. And what that is referring to is the scripting name of an object. So I can create an integer box all the way over here. And if I click on the info tab for this integer box, you'll see down here under the name tab of that info tab, there's the scripting name. You can give this a name. It really doesn't matter. Whatever makes sense to you, I'm going to call this numbox1. And uh, capital and all that, super important, keep that in mind. So this is numbox with a capital B. And then in pattern forward, in the object name, we're now going to type that scripting name. So we're gonna type numbox, capital B, O, X, one. And now any data we send through pattern forward will show up in that number box. I'm just gonna patch it into the inlet of pattern forward, lock the patch by clicking on this icon and then clicking on the number box and dragging through. Uh, and you'll see as I'm doing that, this integer box down here is also changing to be the same number. And that's really amazing because this lets you send data around very easily and without a whole bunch of patch cords going everywhere or a bunch of extra like send and receive pairs, it simplifies the process a lot. And it's more than just data you can send through as well. You can do other certain things like send messages. So if we type in the um, message set dollar sign one, which stands for a variable. So we'll patch our number box into our message and then we'll patch the message box out into the pattern forward object. And that dollar sign one will be replaced with this number as we change it. And the set number integer value will go through and be set into this number box and to prove how this works i'm also going to patch the outlet of this number box down here into the right inlet of a message box this is a cold inlet for a message box and it will show the data coming in and display it um, but it won't output it so it's kind of like just a buffer that holds numbers and as i change this we'll see the number change in the integer box but nothing is actually being passed out into the message. And that's because of the set message. It's just setting the value in our integer box without output. If we want it to output with the set message, um, we can then send a bang or a bang message. So I'm gonna type in a message bang and we'll patch that into pattern forward. And then when you click on this, that number is now sent out because this number box received a bang. It would be the same thing as patching a button into this integer box. We can change this number, we'll see it update, then we'll click this button and that bang comes through and outputs it into this number box. Again, if we get rid of the set message, it's basically combining these two steps into one and you can just change this number and it will output with it. It all comes down to the use case that you need. Uh, it's just, we have these options to do tons of different things and send data in a bunch of different ways. And it's not just set and bang too. There's also the select message you could try sending if you wanted to. And if you just patch that into pattern forward object, click on it, you'll see it's now highlighted. This integer box has changed color um, because we it's like we've selected it. It's the same thing as if you clicked on it. Just super cool little tricks for enhancing the UI of your patch, which is a really valuable thing. What's also nice about this, you can change the scripting name that you are sending the data to without having to change the object. So we can actually just do a message send, we'll say box num1 for our original box, and we'll copy this over. I did that by holding down the option key and dragging. And then if we change the one to a two, we'll send that into the pattern forward as well. We'll copy and paste all this and we'll just in this second integer box now update our scripting name to box two i am a silly guy and i reverse the names it's not box num it's num box of course see perfect example of why everything matters 
Okay. So now we'll see it send to box one, but now if I click the send numbox two message, it will send to the correct number box. And we can just go back and forth and send this to whichever box we feel, just using that send and then the name, the scripting name we've given the object. So you can make one pattern forward object, your like main out to a bunch of different things. So that is also very versatile and very useful because again, it's really reducing the number of objects and patch cords we have going all over the place. When you start building like really big projects that are really involved and actually need a lot of UI stuff as well, this will make it so much cleaner in the end. It'll be much easier to follow and all around more simple. Another perfect example of what I'm talking about with this and how this makes the user interface stuff simple is we could use it to send data into sub patches or send the data from a sub patch back out into the main patch. So we're going to create a toggle. I did that by pressing T. Um, and then I'm going to create a sub patch by typing in P, that stands for sub patch. And then I'm just going to give this sub patch a name. It can really be anything. I'm going to call it sub patcher. And it creates a new max window that is inside this sub patch object. And to do this, we'll create uh, an inlet, you can do it in one of two ways. You can just type an in inlet or you can click this plus button icon here and drag and drop an inlet in. And then we can create a toggle. And we'll create a toggle out here. And real fast, I'm also going to create a this patcher object. I'm going to say window flag float comma window exec. This is um, very extra, but this should keep its flags. There we go. This is a bit extra, but this will keep this window floating for us so I can be doing stuff in this max patch and we can see it happening in the sub patch right here. If you're intrigued by this, I will do a, a tutorial video on it very soon. But back to the matter at hand, our pattern forward and using this to create clean user interfaces. So what we have set up right now is a sub patch with this toggle going into it. And if I click this toggle, it's gonna turn that toggle on, right? And that's pretty neat. And if I click it again, it's gonna turn it off. And maybe, you know, for some reason in your patch, it's really important that you can turn this toggle on in this main window and it turns it on in this window, but you also have the option to turn it off in this window and doing so will turn this toggle off as well. You see, I clicked this one and it didn't turn this toggle off and that's because of you know how Max works. It's all data flow and signal flow. The data is coming out through this patch cord into this sub patch through this inlet into this toggle. So it makes sense that clicking this you know, changes things, but this toggle isn't going back out into this toggle. It's not doing anything. That's why when I click it, it's not turning it off. But maybe, you know, like I'm saying for your patch, you need it to turn that toggle off. There's a lot of different ways you can make this work. The basic solution, the thing that might come to your mind right away is adding an outlet into this object and patching that through and patching this uh, sub patcher outlet back into this. And if you click that, uh, you'll see you can get stack overflow. You might even realize, yeah, we need to uh, we need to address that. We need to put a change in there so we're not creating a, a stack overflow. And if you click that toggle, now that works. And if you click this toggle, now that works as well. And it's pretty cool. But we got this outlet, you know, we had to make an outlet and patch it back into this toggle to make that work. That is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this really. And in fact, I've done this all the time, all over the place until I thought about using pattern forward for this purpose. We can actually simplify this process a lot faster and we can make it a lot cleaner and use less objects. And that is with the pattern forward object because all we need to do instead is give this toggle a name. So I'm gonna click it, open up the inspector tab and we're gonna find that scripting name and we're gonna call it main top. And then we're gonna get rid of this for now. We don't need that. Instead, we're going to say pattern forward and we're going to send the toggle output front through the pattern forward back to this main toggle. And it's actually very easy to do that. There's just one thing to keep in mind because this is a sub patch and we are talking to the, we want to send something to the main window patch. We need to say 
parent colon colon and then the name that we're trying to do which in this case is main talk this is super important we are we need to put this parent preface in here because we are talking to something in the parent window that is technically what this main window is called and this sub patch would be the child it's a pretty standard thing in computer programming for it to work like this and you just got to specify that that is what you want but it's you know just pretty easy keep it in mind and then same thing we will still need a change object in here to filter out the repetition so we don't get stack overflow otherwise it's going to continuously loop sending this data around um, but now if we click this you'll see that still works and if we click this in here again it's turning that toggle off and we don't have an extra outlet that we don't need and we don't have this extra patch cord that we don't need and hopefully right away you can actually see why this is super useful because if you think about what you would be doing you know you, you you're not just trying to send this toggle out of a sub patch generally this toggle is probably going to turn something on that does a bunch of other stuff in your max patch that is sending out the actual data that you really want if you needed to create a bunch of extra outlets to just have this like user interface ability things are going to get messy really fast you're going to have to keep track of which outlets are routing to what and you're going to have a bunch of extra patch cords this removes all of that no more extra outlets no more extra patch cords just super clean easy to use user interface that you would come to expect with any kind of standard application or software that somebody would be using so that's super nice that it works like that and it's very easy and another reason why this is valuable is because if you tried to scale this out say we wanted a sub patch where we needed 16 toggles and we had 16 toggles in here that were all turning on something separate and we needed to be able to turn them on and off from both in this main window and our sub patch window and have it always be synced up having 16 toggles would in the original way would mean 16 extra outlets in addition to what you're doing and 16 extra patch cords whereas this is just super simplified still none of that no issue it's really just copying and pasting and changing scripting names so that is super nice but the best part about powder forward is it doesn't even stop there you can get really specific with what and where you're setting the data if we close this sub patch and we go back to our main window and we create a let's say a pack object and we'll just give it uh, some variables however many um, so we have five inlets now and we'll patch this out into the right inlet of a message box so we can see data coming through and if you know what pack does it just takes all the integers or float numbers patched into it into each one of these inlets and it combines them together in a list so if you had a bunch of number boxes like this um, you can change all of these and you'll see yeah we're now getting this all packed together in list format so that's super clean but we don't even need those if we're using patter forward because with patter forward you can send data to a specific inlet without having to patch anything in that inlet same thing we just got to give the pack object a scripting name so I'm gonna click on it we're going to open up the inspector tab we're going to go to scripting name and we're going to give it a name like tupac just like that tupac because we're sending tupac and then we're going to say patter forward patter forward tupac and we can put in a message and we'll say something like in zero for the very first inlet you got to remember max and every other computer programming language zero is generally our starting number it is a number so it's our first in a lot of instances and we'll say for now we'll just type in a hard or yeah let's type in a hard number like 105 it doesn't matter and then we'll copy this and we'll change our zero to a one for our next inlet and type in a hard number there let's say three and then i don't know we still got more we can combine all of these into a list as well we just give it our defining starting point so two is our third inlet and then we have two more so we'll just say this is like a thousand two thousand three thousand and it's going to know to fill in the rest of those and so now that we have all of these patched into our pattern forward and we have our named pack object down here i'll click this first one you see it updated to 105 and that data was sent directly into this first inlet same thing if I click into at one updated and then into with the list of three and it updated and followed from there and updated the rest so that's super useful too 
because again this is way less objects and a way cleaner interface because we don't have a bunch of patch cords going all over the place um, and this pack could be anywhere in our patch and we can send data to it using the pattern forward object and it's really nice that it is just able to be specified directly into a certain inlet and that can come in handy in a plethora of different use cases and it doesn't even really stop there we can even do so much more instead of just sending the data to a specific inlet we could even send it to the patcher as a whole as you saw earlier i used this patcher to make this window float when it's open you can do the same thing actually using the patter forward object you don't need this patcher so um to make it not float i'm going to type in no float and there we go it's no longer floating i'm going to delete this object we don't need that anymore we instead are going to take our toggle here we're going to say cell one so we get a bang when we click it on we are going to then give a name to our sub patch so in our scripting name we'll call it patchy and then we'll say in we'll do a message inx which is telling it to send it to the object patcher itself rather than a specific inlet and you can then send any of those this patcher messages to it it's the exact same thing so we can say something like front and then when we patch this into here and we patch this into a patter forward object that has the name of our sub patch so that's patchy then when we click this toggle it will also now open our sub patch window which is pretty nice and that is just the power of patter forward there's still so much more we could do with this because you can just send data to any objects it really expands how much you can do and how simple you can really make it again it's all about the cleaner interface and with that that's going to be the end of this video hopefully you guys found this helpful and learned something about a new object that you did not know before if you guys did find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe because that is how I know best that you found this helpful. If there are any questions or anything, please leave those in the comments down below. And on that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.